I had started with Senator Biden's office in 1992 in the fall uh, when President Clinton, um, the inaugural and all of that. So I came on in, the, in December of that year and then uh, continued on through 93. And um, as was in the press before, there was a sexual harassment claim uh, that I made. And uh, the part that I excluded was an encounter that I had with Joe Biden. Um, it was very painful and it's had a long lasting effect on my life. So go, let's talk about that um, incident, Tara. First, describe it for the audience. And also, why is it that you left out that part of the claim when you originally stepped forward, whenever there was an accusation against the former vice president that took place uh, from a Nevada lawmaker? Why is it that you're coming forward at this point? And please, uh, I, don't, I want to make sure that you have your, your say and you can, you can describe the story in, as full and in, in whatever way you feel comfortable. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I actually, there were many obstacles. I think the biggest one was fear um, of retaliation. I received in 1993 when I attempted to bring forward the claims, I received a great deal of retaliation in the workplace. And um, I lost my job and career as a result of coming forward. And uh, I was too frightened then to talk about it and didn't really have the framework then to, you know, how how to come forward and all of that. And then um, last April, when I saw Lucy Flores being just torn apart by the press, it was, I mean, I don't want to blame the press, but it was just, she was being kind of vilified and it was painful to see because her claim was valid um, from my perspective, because I had experienced it. And a friend of mine who knew me at that time called me and said, hey, Tara, you know, they're saying no employees of former employees of Joe Biden have come forward. Um, and I said, I know. And um, I decided to come forward about that portion. And then as soon as I did, I, uh, a couple of reporters from national outlets called me. But by then, I was already getting um, smeared on social media and I'd gotten some threats by phone. And I just uh, just kind of went silent and decided I wanted to approach it from like uh, approaching like an advocacy organization for help. Mm -hmm. um, so the portion that I didn't talk about was the encounter with Joe Biden. And it was um, after he had said some things about wanting me to serve drinks to donors that he thought I was pretty and had nice legs and things like that. And uh, we didn't really have that many. There was no relationship. There was no flirtation or anything like that. He just, he just made it clear he liked me. Um, the scheduler told me that he did as well. And um, it was strange. But anyway, I um, was uh, doing whatever I was doing in the office. And the scheduler came in and said, uh, Joe, Joe wants you to bring this to him. Hurry. And it was his athletic bag. It's called a gym bag. And so I, I was carrying it. And, um, and this is where I want to be really frank with you and everyone. I have worked so hard to not remember this anymore that now that I've talked about it, I only shared it with a couple of people and it happened at the time. So there are spots where I just don't remember certain things. But I remember the assault itself and then the aftermath and the reverberating effect of that. Um, and... I was walking to the Capitol and through the Russell building, you go down the stairs, you go down, and then it was somewhere in either the Russell or Capitol, I'm not sure, in an awful, but we were in a semi-private place. It wasn't completely private. He was at first talking to someone, they went away, and then he said, here, and then when I gave him the gym bag, it happened all in one motion, almost, and he had me... Um, against the wall and then his hands were down my skirt and up my skirt and I was wearing um I wasn't wearing tights or anything and um he then with his hand uh you know um went from there and I uh, entered me with his hand and as he was trying to kiss me and saying things to me so when I tell you what happened, it's hard because everything kind of happened at once, but there were incremental parts to it. Mm -hmm. 
and um, meaning he was kiss, trying to kiss me and I was pulling away. And what I remember of that time is, is feeling really shocked, I was surprised because there was no real conversation right beforehand. There was no precursor, it just happened. And then when he did that, um, I was obviously pulling away and he pulled back and said, you know, come on, man, I heard you liked me. Um, something to that effect. And that's what kind of jolted me. Like I was trying to think what I did wrong um, to bring that on me. And then he, um, he looked angry and irritated with me. And I, That's when I knew it was really, I, I was in a very difficult position because he was my boss and he was like my dad's age at the time. And I trusted him and looked up to him. And I, it was, it was, it was not like I disliked him. I liked him, but I just didn't like him in that way. And I, it was just shocking. It was shattering actually. And he, said to me when he pulled back, he pointed his finger at me and he said, you're nothing to me. You're nothing. Mm. And then he straightened his clothes and he, he went away. And um, I don't, I don't remember, I know I went to the restroom to clean up, but I don't remember exactly I remember the next memory I have is of the Russell building. There's these long windows that are very tall and this empty kind of like there's back stairs. And I was sitting on the back stairs and I just remember the coldness and my whole body shaking and feeling alone and feeling scared and not knowing what to do or who to talk to. And it just, I knew I had made him angry because I insulted him by pulling away and stuff. I, it was awkward and horrible. Mm. So I um, called my mom later. I went home and uh, she was furious. And she said she educated me about sexual assault. At that time, I really didn't look at it as a sexual assault. I thought I did. I felt like I put him in a bad position. It's strange to say, but I, I felt like I did something wrong. Because after um, I was told to like serve the drinks and I wouldn't, the scheduler said um, things like, you need to button up more, you need to dress less provocatively. And I was in my 20s and I was dressed in pretty much business clothes, so I was confused by that. And my mother described that as retaliation and she was, she was kind of explaining to me what was happening. And I didn't, I wasn't uh, aware of how this worked, you know, in that kind of. Right. And um, so when she, when I called her, she said, I want you to make a police report. And I said, Mom, who do I call? It's the Capitol Police. Like, he's the most powerful, one of the most powerful people in the world. You know, he's chairman of the judiciary. I'm not, there's nothing I can do. And there's, no one saw it, I don't think. And she said, you need to march into the office and need to make a sexual harassment claim. And she was like, Tommy and I, we argued about this. And um it was after the incident that I, I did make a written claim outside the office because I had tried to follow protocol with the sexual harassment and just how, how I couched it was in terms of I felt uncomfortable. And I went to my supervisor, and I don't know if it's okay for me to say the names of the upper-level supervisors I went to, but there were two. Yeah. And they were in upper Yeah. And so, and so, t Tara, just just to be clear, you filed a, a claim um, that's been reported before about es essentially sexual harassment in the office, but this claim wasn't part of that. However, in addition to your mom, you told a, a couple other people at the time about what had happened to you. Can you just speak to that? Um, I did. I told my friend, um, and I don't want to say her name on the air, but she was yeah. a close friend who was in Kennedy's office. And uh, she talked with me about it, kind of helped me process it. Um, but also, she was kind of as clueless as me as to what to do. And we were more just kind of around safety. And then it was sort of like, okay, how do I maintain a job or get a different job? And this is, 
you know, it, it was it was sinking in that I was obviously not going to be able to stay there. And it was soon after that I was put in a windowless office and my supervisor of the interns was taken away and I was not allowed to have other contact with staff. And I was told to find a job within a month. Um, and to be perfectly clear, I did not report the sexual assault to my supervisor. I had started to tell her in a hallway, mm -hmm. we were talking and, tried to and she shut it down and I don't know how much of it but she kind of was acting like she knew the direction I was going it's hard I don't want to you know project something so I don't know but I, I did not so um they were basically um just wanted me to leave because of the whole you know sexual harassment thing right and I had been by my supervisor you know if you don't you know, in order to stay here, you have to just keep your head down and do as you're told. 